All right, so if you've ever set up a home lab with Proxmox, chances are you've heard about the so-called holy grail of containers, the unprivileged LXC, right? It's supposed to be this perfect mix of being super lightweight and totally secure. But, and you probably know where I'm going with this, sometimes the thing that's supposed to be perfect is just perfectly frustrating. So today, let's pull back the curtain and talk about the promise and the very real pain of unprivileged LXCs. And look, this quote right here from a recent chat between Proxmox users, it just nails the feeling, doesn't it? You spend hours you know, trying to do everything by the book, follow all the security advice, and then you step back and realize your entire setup is just broken. And that's really the core problem we're digging into here, that massive gap between doing things the right way and you know, just getting them to actually work. Okay, so let's start with the theory. On paper, these unprivileged Linux containers, or LXCs, they really are the golden ticket. I mean, they're supposed to be this amazing way to run your apps in their own little sandboxes right on your Proxmox host, but without all the heavyweight resource use of a full VM. It's kind of like the tech equivalent of eating your vegetables. You're just told it's the right thing to do. So the key difference here, the whole point really, is how it handles the root user. See, in a privileged container, the root user inside that container is the actual root user of your entire Proxmox server. That's, yeah, that's scary. If an attacker breaks into that container, they've got the keys to the whole kingdom. But with an unprivileged container, that root user is just a phantom. On the actual host machine, it's mapped to some random high-numbered user with zero power. So if an attacker gets in, they're just trapped in a box with nowhere to go. That's the whole promise of secure isolation. And because of this really clever design, you get these three huge wins. First, they're super lightweight. They sip resources compared to a full VM. They're also crazy efficient, spinning up in literally seconds. And of course, the big one, that secure isolation we just talked about. I mean, that's why everyone says this is the ideal setup. So with all that going for it, what could possibly go wrong? Well, this is where that perfect theory comes crashing headfirst into reality. You've done everything right, you've followed all the guides, you've set up your beautiful, secure, unprivileged container, and then, bam, you hit the walls. And I mean hard, immovable walls that are just covered in permission-denied errors. So let's walk through a classic, real-world example that trips everyone up. You've got your Proxmox VE8 host. You spin up a simple, unprivileged container with Debian 12 to run your Postgres database. You've got an NFS share on your network all ready for backups. And the goal is dead simple. Just get reliable backups of that database. I mean, this should be easy, right? This is exactly the kind of thing these containers are built for. But nope. This is exactly where the nightmare begins. Almost immediately, you hit wall number one. You try to mount that NFS share from inside your new container, and you can't. The container's root user just doesn't have the power to do that kind of thing on the host system. And here's the kicker. This isn't a bug. If you go look it up on the Proxmox wiki, they'll tell you this is working exactly as designed. It's a security feature. Okay, okay, so you think, all right, I'll try the common workaround. You mount the NFS share on the Proxmox host itself, and then you bind mount that folder into the container. Smart, right? So now you go to run a backup using vsdump, that's Proxmox's own built-in backup tool, and what happens? It fails. It just completely fails. You know, it works fine for all your other containers, but for this one, it just melts down. You're stuck in this weird permissions no man's land. Now you're getting desperate, right? You're thinking, forget the fancy backup tools, I'll do it myself. You jump inside the container, you run a manual PG dump to save the database, and you try to write that file to the shared folder. And you hit wall number three. The exact same permission errors pop right back up, stopping you from writing anything. You are completely and utterly trapped. And this, this right here, this is the error message that haunts the dreams of pretty much any home labber or sysadmin. This is the proof of your pain. Permission denied. It's such a simple message, but it represents a problem that feels impossibly complicated. So what is actually going on here? Why is this happening? 
All right, let's get to the aha moment, because it turns out that all three of those walls, all of that frustration, it's all caused by one single core concept. And the irony? It's the exact same security feature we were just praising a few minutes ago. It's a feature called UID and GID mapping. That stands for user ID and group ID mapping. Here's how it works. Inside your container, the root user looks like it has an ID of zero, which is normal for root. But to the outside world, to the Proxmox host itself, that ID gets translated or mapped to some super high, random, powerless user ID, like 100,000. This is the magic that creates that secure sandbox. And here is where it all falls apart. That NFS share, it was mounted by the host, which knows that root is user ID zero. But then your container comes along, and from the host's perspective, it's not root, it's user 100,000. So when user 100,000 tries to write to a folder that's owned by user zero, the system, the NFS server, just looks at it and says, whoa, hold on, you're not on the list, access denied. This ID mismatch, that is the root cause of every single permission denied error you've been seeing. Okay, so now we finally understand the why. The good news is, you are definitely not the first person to slam their head against this particular wall. The community has been fighting in these trenches for years, and they've come up with a bunch of ways to either fix this, or just cleverly get around it. Let's look at five paths to getting your sanity back. So, the million dollar question. How do you actually escape this permission denied hell and get back to, you know, just using your stuff? Let's break down the real world options that people are actually using to get things working. All right, here are the five main workarounds you'll see out in the wild. First, you can stick with the bind mount, but this means you have to go deep and actually solve that UID GID mispatch on the host and the NFS server. It's powerful, but it's work. Second, you could create a staging area on the host, but that just adds extra steps and complexity. Third, some people just ditch NFS for this and switch to SMB, which is often less picky about permissions, but it can be slower. And then you have the two, let's call them nuclear options. You can just give in, make the container privileged and accept the security trade-off. Or fifth, you can just throw in the towel on LXC for this specific job and use a good old fashioned VM, which avoids the whole UID mapping headache entirely. And really, that brings us to the heart of the whole debate, doesn't it? This isn't just about picking a technical solution. It's, it's a personal choice. It's a fundamental trade-off that every single one of us in the home lab world has to make. What do you value more? Following security best practices to the letter or your own time and sanity? When you get right down to it, you're choosing between two main philosophies. On one side, you have the path of maximum security. This path requires you to really level up your skills to develop some serious Linux permission kung fu to get everything working perfectly. On the other side, you've got the path of maximum sanity. This path is all about prioritizing things that just work, even if that means making a compromise, like using a privileged container or a VM for that one tricky service. And listen, there is no single right answer here. It's all about what's right for you. So, What's the final wisdom we can take away from everyone who's been through this? Well, it boils down to a few key things. First, best practice isn't always best for your actual workflow. You have to plan your storage strategy carefully from the very beginning. Remember that having reliable backups that actually work is way more important than having a pure container setup. And you know what? Sometimes the boring but super reliable answer, like a small, well-tuned VM, is actually the smartest choice. In the end, it all boils down to one simple, powerful question you should ask yourself anytime you're deep in a technical rabbit hole like this. Are you here to use your infrastructure, or are you here to fight it? Your answer to that question will tell you exactly which path you need to take. Thanks for joining me for this explainer.